Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending this uh, little webinar. This shouldn't take too long. Uh, we're going to try to get through this as quickly as we can and not take up too much of your time. Uh, my name is Gary Thomas. Uh, I'll basically be running the webinar today. I'm our uh, sales engineer here at Buffalo. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about our remote management service. I'm going to skip a lot of our regular introductory type stuff uh, on this webinar because it's pretty straightforward and it's going to, it's, um, it's meant just to be informative and, and to give everybody an introduction and get them started. All right. First of all, we just want to point out that right now it's uh, designed for uh, basically all of our terror station units. These are the ones that are uh, useful right now. Uh, gives you one interface. You can see all of the devices that you're managing or that you're supporting. You can handle minor functions uh, without having to VPA in or remote into your customer site or, or, heaven forbid, actually having to drive to a customer site. Uh, let you monitor your errors. You can reboot the unit remotely. You can push a firmware update. There's some other little functions we'll go into. Uh, if in the event that you need to contact our tech support group for help, uh, you can get the information on the unit fairly easily from the remote management tool. And the information you need is, is specifically things like the serial number, um, other system information like the system type, uh, what the firmware version is. You can pull a log set. Uh, I'm sure if some of you have contacted our tech support group in the past, they've asked you for a uh, a full log from a device. Uh, you can easily get that here without having to go on site. And like I said, it's it's currently only available for the 3010, 5010, and 6000 series. Uh, some of our older devices uh, are in, planned to be added in the future. Uh, hopefully in the next few months we'll be adding support for the uh, TS5000 unit if you've got some of those, uh, and the TS3000s as well. All right. Right now, one big thing I have to tell you is that you have to be at a minimum firmware version. So for the 3010 and 5010, that firmware is 4.48. For the 6400, it's going to be 5.06. Uh, these are not currently on the online update servers. Uh, so if you go into your terror station and you tell it to check for an update, it's not going to see an update. It's not going to see these versions. What you'll need to do is to go to buffalotech.com, uh, select your uh, model, and download the firmware updater from there. <coughs> All right, there are two primary portals. Um, one is the one that we're going to look at. Uh, there's the Buffalo Administrator Portal, and there's a support portal where our support group uh, uh, can go in if you um, and, and pull information if need be. Uh, if you've given them that permission. Uh, that's actually a feature that's, I, I think it's it was in the beta, and I think it's deprecated right now in the uh, in the release, and it'll probably be added back a little bit later on. Uh, there's also the portal for MSPs and for end users. That's the one we're going to talk about. <clears throat> Each new account uh, has to be created on the back end by us. Uh, you can't just go in and create an account uh, when, it, when you do that, it'll send an email to you. Uh, the email will have a link to take you to the management portal, and it will also have the system-generated password. Keep in mind, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry about that, folks. Um, keep in mind that's going to come from kikinavi.net. Uh, that's a domain owned by our uh, corporate parent in uh, Japan. So uh, if you don't see your email, check your spam filters, check your junk mail, see if you have an email from this domain. This is essentially what the email will look like. Uh, there may be some variations on this. Um, obviously, things can change over time, but right now this is what it should look like. It's going to contain <coughs> your corporate password, the pre-generated password, as well as the link to log in. 
This is what the login portal looks like. So you'll put in your uh, your email address and your password. Log in, and this is uh, essentially what it's going to look like. We're going to do a short walkthrough here in a moment. All right, just an idea of the way things kind of break down. So uh, by default, there will be two. There will be a, a user, a user group, and a device group created. Now, all users belong to a user group. Right now, a user can't belong to more than one user group. And then user groups are tied to uh, device groups, and then device groups actually hold the devices. So rights are, or users are broken down by what user group they're in and by what device group that group is attached to. And here's kind of an idea of the way this will look. Uh, as you can see, you can have some users that are uh, administrative type users. They can make, uh, they can do, they have all the privileges. <coughs> Some users can do uh, just simple management, and then you'll have some users that all they can do is monitor. They can go in and look at uh, the status of devices uh, and look at the information of the devices, but they can't send any commands. They can't send, uh, make any kind of changes. So, and really, it's it's up to you how you organize this. We're not uh, we're not telling people this is the way you know you should do it a specific way. We're leaving it. Uh, we're building the framework and let you set it up and manage it however it is you want to be able to manage your account. Here's a good chart that shows you what the different user privileges are. So you have administrators, power users, and standard users. The first chart talks about uh, how users affect each other. An administrator can change a user type for anybody. Uh, a power user can change the user type of a standard user, but not another power user or an administrator, and a standard user can't create any kind of users. <coughs> now, as far as uh, device privileges, user privileges when it comes to devices, administrators and power users are the same. Standard users can only do monitoring. When you get ready to, uh, once you've created your account, the first thing you're going to do is create a device registration key uh, that's done in the tool. And uh, we're going to walk through that process here in a little bit. And you use that device registration key to register the terror station to the tool. All right, so let's jump in here. And so here's what the tool looks like. Uh, this is. Uh, and we have a couple of our units in it here from our lab. Uh, you'll see this one showing an error. So this, if you have an error, it'll show up here. Uh, you can click here and see well, what type of error is that. And this is just a connection error. Uh, if it were something else, it would tell us that, like if it were a failed drive or uh, maybe a backup job failure or something like that, uh, it would give us that information here. All right, so here's where you can do your remote operations. Remotely, I can restart the unit. I can just shut it down. I can click I'm here, which basically will make the unit beep. So if you have somebody on site and you need to, you need to get them to, to look at a specific device, uh, you can do this and it'll start beeping for them. You can push a firmware update if the update is loaded on our uh, online servers. The timer is the interesting one for me. I can have it do a, a specific thing like a restart or a firmware update and have it do it at a specific time and date. <clears throat> Maybe I don't want to reboot it during the middle of the day, but I want to reboot it so I can set that to reboot overnight if I want. All right, uh, let's see. Let's look at device details. This is where you can get some good information. Uh, the firmware version, this is actually the older beta firmware. Uh, this was never publicly available, uh, but there's your serial number, gives you the status of the RAID, uh, how much space is used. This is, is actually pretty much used up because I, we've got it configured as one big iSCSI target. But it gives you the smart status of the drives, etc. Here's where I can pull a log file if I want to pull a log file. And I can get the settings file here. 
Uh, this is the configuration file. If you want to change this, move the settings from one terror station to another, maybe you want to configure a new terror station the same way as an older one. You can pull the settings file, put it on a USB key, and apply it to a new device. Like I said, by default, you always will have the default device group <coughs> and the default user group. And here you can create new users. Tie that user to a user group, and then the user group is to tie it to a device group. Now let's talk about registration. <coughs> so when I want to register a new device, I'm going to come in here, go to my device registration keys. Here's an old key that's no longer valid because it expired. Expired on the 16th. I'm going to generate a key. Now keep in mind, when you generate a key, there's a couple things you have to do. One, pick an expiration date. By default, it's going to expire today. So this key is only good for the for, for tomorrow uh, all the time. The default expiration date will always be the next day. I can change this if I want. Um, I can set it for you know 20 years from now if I want. I have to pick a device group. Right now, I've only got one device group. So that's the one I'm going to pick. And then I pick the number of registrable device, devices. Now, this is entirely up to you. If you want to create one key that is always going to put devices in the same group <coughs> and use it to register a dozen devices, that's fine. If you want to create a new key for each device, that's fine, too. But whatever, I'm going to put the, the number here. Once I've picked my device group and selected a number of registrable devices, that's when the OK key will become button will become active. Until then, it won't... I can't click OK. It won't let me do anything. I know we've already had uh, uh, at least a few calls into tech support about this that say, and I tried to create, generate a key, and, it, and the OK button's grayed out. Well, you have to make all your selections before the OK button becomes active. Same thing here when I go to create a user. I'm going to create a username, pick which uh, user group it's in. Email address, what type of user it's going to be, power user, standard user, or administrator. And when I pick it, when I create a device group, it's going to tie it to a user group. So I can set up all my users in one user group and have that user group tied to all the device groups, or I can create a different user group for each. Uh, <coughs> device group. It's up to you however you want to do it. All right. Um, that's really just about it. I, like I said, uh, we're, we try to keep this short for everyone. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, we'll hang around here for a minute. Uh, and you can type those in in the, uh, in the webinar software. All right, we've got one question coming in here. Um, if you've uh, if you've requested an account, it should have been created. Uh, if it hasn't, this is <coughs> double check again. Check your uh, spam filter and your junk mail. Uh, otherwise. Uh, I would say get in touch with either your salesperson or the support team at uh, just email support at buffalotech.com and we'll look into it and make sure we get you set up correctly. And uh, somebody wants to know if we'll get this recording. This recording will be posted to our website um, in our knowledge base and on our YouTube channel. So as soon as uh, we get that recording, um, our crack marketing team will uh, get it edited and uh, get it posted for you. All 
All right, I don't see uh, anything else coming in. Um, if you do have any other questions, uh, like I said, uh, feel free to contact your uh, <coughs> your sales team. Uh, they can get you help uh, helped out with that. Uh, if you're you if you need help with it later on down the road, uh, our support team can help you out with that as well. I want to apologize to everyone for my voice today. So. All right, we got one more question here. All right, uh, it's just someone telling us uh, we'll get ready to show this recording to their staff. Hopefully, we can get that uh, available for you in the, by the end of the week. I hope uh, it should be. Normally, we can get these fairly quick from uh, from the webinar service, and we can get a pretty good turnaround on those, pretty quick turnaround on those. So, hopefully, we'll have that recording available uh, by the end of the week. All right, if no one has anything else, we'll go ahead and wrap up, uh, let you get back to your day. Thank you all for attending, and uh, we look forward to talking to all of you in the future.